So you came to this video because you're looking for the best laptop as a graphic designer in 2019. And whether you're a graphic designer or just in the creative space, you came to the right place. I'm Benji Kaiser, and if you're new to the channel, this channel exists primarily to help graphic designers get started, get the tools they need, and maximize their potential in either getting a job or starting their own freelance business in the graphic design industry. So if you're interested in any of those things, I recommend subscribing to the channel. Now before we dive into this video, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what to expect. I'm not just going to walk you through a couple models that I like and say, hey, go buy those. Now, if you are interested in the models that I am talking about as we make it through this video, you can head down into the description below and pick up any of those models. Those are affiliate links and they will give me a small commission but at no extra cost to you. But that is what keeps this channel alive and keeps this helpful content coming your way. What I will do though throughout this video is I will tell you why the specs of these computers fit for a graphic designer. I've been in the industry for a little under a decade now. I love graphic design. I love talking about the tech side of graphic design. So this is something that really speaks to me and it's a video that I really enjoy putting out. So I'm really glad you're here. All right, now the first thing we're going to dive into is the tech, the performance. You want to make sure that these four things are covered and you have the performance you need so you're not lagging behind, wasting time, and waiting for your computer to load. You want to make sure you have a good performing computer. The first thing you want to look at is RAM. You want at least 16 gigs of RAM in a graphic design laptop. The reason being is you're usually running multiple programs at the same time. What happens is when you're running multiple programs, that pulls away from the RAM memory. So say you have Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator open, and you're doing some research on the web. Well, each one of those applications is going to pull away from your RAM memory, and if you only have, say, 8 gigs of RAM, you're going to quickly use that up and your computer is going to get really slow. I found back in the day when I first got into graphic design school with a MacBook Pro 2010, I had 8 gigs of RAM and my computer would slow down dramatically as soon as I opened more than two programs. It worked best with one open. Now I have a Dell XPS 15 where I have 32 gigs of RAM and I can run Premiere Pro, InDesign, Photoshop, and be uploading a video to YouTube all at the same time with very little performance decrease. So RAM is very important in making sure you can run multiple programs at a time and this really helps out your workflow. Alright, now the second thing we want to look at is the hard drive. I recommend without a doubt a solid state hard drive. Now the reason being is reliability as well as performance. So let's talk about that. Reliability. With no moving parts inside a solid state hard drive compared to a standard hard disk drive, you will have far more reliability because it's not going to wear out. They say that some solid state hard drives will last 200 years. I don't know if that's true, but it sounds a lot more reliable than hard disk drives, which usually lasted me about a year and a half to two years before they crashed and I lost all my stuff. So reliability is huge. The second part of that is performance. Because there's no moving parts, it is far faster. All right, now let's break down hard disk drive versus solid state drive and kind of just give an example. Now imagine that I want to know the definition of a word. I have a dictionary sitting on my shelf or I can get on my iPhone and I can search the word. Now in order to go get the word from the dictionary, I'm going to have to get up out of my chair, walk over to the shelf, pull up the dictionary, search through the word for the word. Let's say that word is obligation. And I open up to obligation, I kind of sift through, okay, bam, obligation. What does that mean? It means a commitment. It means something that I have to follow through with. It's something I've committed to. All right, versus me getting on my iPhone and just typing in obligation definition, boom. And the definition is usually right there at the top of Google. So that's kind of the difference between the performance of a solid state hard drive versus a hard disk drive. A hard disk drive is spinning and it uses an eye and has to find the information versus a solid state hard drive that it just, it's just there. That's how I basically can explain it. All right, so the next thing we're going to look at is the graphics processing unit. This is very important if you're going to be somebody who works heavily in Photoshop and somebody who is leaning towards After Effects and Premiere Pro. Now you say, well, I'm a graphic designer. Why would I be in After Effects or Premiere Pro? Well, what I've noticed is there's so much going into animated ads, especially if you're going to be doing social media. Um, the Instagram ads, I've built a bunch for some clients and I've used a lot of Premiere Pro and After Effects in order to create really engaging ads. So you got to think about that. You don't just want to be on the tail end. Um, you want to be on the cusp of the graphic design industry, making sure you can bring the best quality to your clients. Now, 
these programs though need a lot of graphics processing so that's why I recommend at least the GTX 960 but I personally would lean towards the GTX 1050 or the 1060 because you want to have a computer that can keep up with the work you're throwing at it. Now for my Apple Mac fans that's going to be the Radeon 555X graphics processing unit. Alright so the last key feature we want to talk about is the processor for the graphic design specs. You can get away with an i5 processor. The most current i5 processors have become more powerful. However, I would recommend as a benchmark the i7. It's because it's not quite the i9, it's not the latest and the greatest, but it is on par with being a great performer for a graphic design laptop. I have the i7 matched with 32 gigs of RAM, a GTX 1050 graphics processing unit, and a solid state hard drive in my Dell XPS 15 and it performs extremely well. So that's why I think it's a good middle of the road. Now, if you're on a budget, I would recommend getting an i5 processor. But if you wanna get great performance, that is where the i7 will come in. Now, if you are interested in a budget laptop, if you say, okay, these are great, but I don't know if I'm gonna, these are gonna be my price range, you can check out a video I made for the best budget laptops. It'll be in the YouTube cards above or the description below. All right, so now let's get into some of the practical everyday uses of the computer. So if you have this computer, if you're around town, if you're you know trying to be a graphic designer on the day to day, what do you need? Now, the thing is, you want to think about your use. So, you know, I'm not gonna talk about everything, but I am gonna give you a glimpse on what I think is important in a computer. And if you like a certain one, as I'm going through later in the video, uh, you say, okay, I really like that computer, then go look at those specs of that computer. Um, I just know you don't wanna spend all day sitting here listening to this video because I could go on and on for hours. I, I love doing this. The first thing I wanna talk about is screens. And if you're really curious about the difference between screen quality for graphic design computers, I've made an entire video about that. You can check that out in the YouTube cards above or the description below. But right now I'm just gonna talk about the basics. Let's talk about 1080p versus 4K versus TN screens versus IPS. So the TN screens are something that is a little less quality than say the IPS screens. Now, you can kind of come down on an angle and look at a TN screen, and what you'll find is that it starts to get that black, mushy color. So you can't look at it from multiple angles, whereas the IPS screen is always crisp, always clear from whatever angle you're looking at it. All right, now 1080p versus 4K. I think 4K is absolutely phenomenal. Do you need it to be a graphic designer? I would say color accuracy is probably a little more important than 4K, and you can get great color accuracy in the IPS screens, whether the Gigabyte Aero 15, whether the Dell XPS 15, or the MacBook Pro, those are great color accuracy screens. All right, now let's talk about the ports on the side of the computer. I think this is very prevalent because as a graphic designer, you wanna maximize your productivity. Daily, I use SD cards, USB drives. I'm always plugging in my external monitor with my HDMI. Um, some people still like display ports, a little bit outdated, but they're still in use. And so you gotta consider these things. So if I had a MacBook Pro, I would have to have a dongle and I would have to be plugging in all these different devices to my dongles. Whereas with my Dell XPS 15, I have HDMI, I have SD card slot, I have a USB drive, um, headphone jack, you know, just simple things that I think are very important. So think about that in a practical standpoint. When you're looking at the computers to come in this video, um, you wanna make sure that you're kinda doing your due diligence to make sure it has the ports that you need. Okay, now, carrying this around town, do you want a light computer or a heavy computer? Um, that's kind of a practical question in the fact of a light computer is gonna cost more than a heavy computer will. So the Dell XPS 15, very thin, MacBook Pro even thinner, um, and those computers are going to be a little bit higher priced than, say, the Predator or the HP Omen. Um, and so that's something you have to consider when you're getting around town. Do you want a nice light computer or do you want something a little heavier? Build quality. Build quality is something that I find very important to myself. That's why I went with the Dell XPS 15 um, above a different computer, say, like Predator Helios. I, I just like the build quality of the Dell XPS 15. It reminded me the most of a MacBook Pro, and to be honest, I was a huge MacBook Pro guy until the performance decrease in the past few years. And so then I wanted to get something that was better equipped for my graphic design needs. Okay, so now that we've covered the specs, and we really understand what makes a great graphic design computer, let's walk through a few recommendations. For my Illustrator friends, I would say the Surface Book 2 is a great computer for illustration. It comes with a GTX 1060 graphics processing unit. It has an i7 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and a solid state hard drive. Now, this computer is fantastic for illustrators because it comes with the pen, the computer also disconnects from the keyboard, so you can carry it around like a tablet and do your sketching. And it has two batteries, so it has one of the longest lasting battery lives within the computers that I recommend for the graphic design industry. I think they're saying somewhere around 16 hours, 
And so I would say if you're doing some heavy-duty graphic design work, you're probably going to get anywhere from 10 to 12 to 14. I don't think you're going to get quite that 16 level. The second computer that really catches my attention is the MateBook X. Now this computer is kind of a spin-off of the MacBook Pro. I'm um, not going to try and get around that at all. If you look at it, it looks like they cloned the MacBook Pro. But I will say before I jump into the specs, one thing that I really like about this computer is the ports on the side of the computer compared to the MacBook Pro. The reason being is it has two USB-C ports which can complement as Thunderbolt ports and it has a USB standard port. So when we saw Mac getting away from kind of the traditional ports on the sides of the computers, the MateBook still follows through with a standard USB, which I appreciate. I use thumb drives a lot, um, and so just kind of sharing files, and I think that is extremely helpful. Now, this computer comes with the i7 processor. It comes with a 512 gig solid state hard drive. It comes with a MX150 graphics processing unit. Like I said earlier, it's not the, you know, what I would say is awesome benchmark for Premiere Pro, for After Effects, but it is a solid graphics processing unit. On the benchmarks test, um, you say, so we have you know the GTX 1050 and the MX 150. So it's just a little bit lower in performance. And this one also comes with 16 gigs of RAM. So it's got the RAM that you need in order for a great graphic design computer. All right, this next computer is leaning more towards the budget category. So for some of you who are like, okay, I don't want any of these crazy expensive computers. I want a little more of a budget. This is the Predator Helios 300. This is by Acer. Now, the cool thing about this computer is it gives you a few options on what specs you want to pick. Now, it does come standard with the i7 and the GTX 1060 graphics processing unit, but if you want to pick a 512 gig solid state hard drive versus a one terabyte, or if you want you know, 16 gigs of RAM versus 32, you can pick out those options. But this is a great budget laptop. Uh, in the best laptops for 2019. I also recommend the HP Omen. So that's a pretty good one too, and I'll list that one in the description below. Those two are pretty strong competitors uh, in the budget range. All right, now we're getting to my personal favorite. That is the Dell XPS 15. This is the computer that I personally use. I have the 9560 version. I'll place both versions in the description below. So the 9560 is a little bit older, 9570 is the newer model. Um, there's a few key differences. So the GTX 1050 is in the model I have versus the GTX 1050 Ti. Um, otherwise, there's a lot of similarities. Both come with i7 processors. You can get 16 to 32 gigs of RAM. So it really depends on your budget and what you're willing to spend. Obviously, the Dell XPS 15 9560, which is the model I have, is a little bit older, a little bit better priced. And the 9570 is that newer model. Totally up to you, but make great laptops. Now, both of these laptops come with 4K screens. Uh, the color quality is absolutely phenomenal. If you're looking for a color accurate screen, this is the computer for you. Uh, everybody is talking about, okay, what computer can I get for color accuracy? The Dell XPS 15 and another one that I have coming up in a few minutes here uh, is going to be for you. All right, so for all you Apple Mac fans, of course, the MacBook Pro 15. This computer I am actually really excited about. The reason being is last time I recorded my best laptops for graphic designers video, the MacBook Pro was really just in the basement as far as performance is concerned. And I was really ragging on them. I, I didn't think they had a computer that was really suitable for graphic designers. But now they stepped it up this past year in 2018, they released this new model. So this computer comes with the i7 or the i9 processor, the Radeon 555X graphics processing unit. You can get anywhere from you know 256 gigs of solid state hard drive all the way up to four terabytes, though I don't recommend that because it becomes like a $7,000 computer. So I would kick it at the basics, honestly. I would not get too outrageous with this computer uh, and you can get anywhere from 16 gigs to 32 gigs of RAM again in the description below you can grab that model check out the different pricing options and see which one works best for you okay now the gigabyte aero 15 X this computer like I said is another one of those Dell XPS 15 competitors they're pretty on point with each other the Gigabyte has 100% Adobe RGB, which is absolutely fantastic. It has very, very good color accuracy. So it's really up to you deciding between Gigabyte and Dell XPS 15. Those two are very, very similar. Again, that computer, you can get the GTX 1060 graphics processing unit, an i7 processor, 16 to 32 gigs of RAM, um, a solid state hard drive. So you have the works. It is a very well-equipped computer. I hope this video has been really helpful today. If so, please mash down that like button. If it hasn't helped you, double tap the dislike button. Always a bonus there. And uh, drop a comment. Let me know if you have any questions. I would love to know what computer you're considering, what computer that you have already bought perhaps. Um, so I love doing this. 
and I appreciate y'all being here. My name is Benji Kaiser of BenjiKaiser.com. Go check out some of the other great content on the channel if you're a graphic designer looking to up your game this year. We'll see you in the next episode.